as we all trust the Lord to come in a mighty way, in a special way. It starts off with the declaration. It's about God moving. So if we must see revival and the revival that will continue, we better cling, 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 so that new life can be new life. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Timothy Gidenji. I'm from Chris New Life Church, Nairobi, Kenya. And I'm coming to us today and I'm teaching the word of God to you. I believe for those who have been following us that the Lord is blessing you, the Lord is speaking to your heart. And I pray that as you receive the word of God, it's going to help you. Your eyes are being opened to be able to know and to hear and to understand what God is saying. Uh, uh, John was told to uh, the Revelator to write to the churches, and uh, many times the Lord Jesus would speak and say, "He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying." So, if you have an ear that is hearing, you can hear and know what the Spirit of God is saying. Let us pray, Father. We thank you. We thank you for your word. I pray, Lord, as your word is coming forth, let it come with the power. Let it come with the revelation. Let it come with the inspiration. Let it come with a breakthrough, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I smite the devil and his kingdom and declare he has no power over here. And I pray, Father, for your presence in a special way. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. So, in our previous program, we were seeing how we can see God's will through the work of the cross. You cannot be able to see God's will or, or your purpose or your destiny outside the working of the cross. The working of the cross means that, uh, it, that, the, that the, the call of God has to be seen, uh, the call of God upon your life or the will of God has to be seen in the light of God. It must be identified by faith that I am crucified. I am crucified. Uh, this is the beginning of obedience. Jesus obeyed God's will and that's why he had to be crucified. Jesus went all the way to the cross. He was crucified. And we, in turn, must be willing to obey whatever it will cost us. The way it costed Jesus everything. Do you know it costed God everything he had? The Bible says he had only one begotten son. And so, uh, uh, he went all the way. But we see the first man, Adam, in the Bible. Adam disobeyed God's will. And he lost so much of what God had for him. He lost a lot of what God had for him. Praise be to Jesus. So God does, God does not want us to lose our destinies and to lose our purposes on earth. He wants us to do the will of God, but we must do the will of God through the crucified nature. So Jesus was willing to die, obeying God's will, in spite of being deserted by his disciples and even being denied by Peter. You know Peter denied the Lord Jesus Christ. He thought he was very, very, very strong, but he denied the Lord, and the Lord was praying for him. He said, Peter, uh, I know Satan has asked to shift you like wheat because he was, a, he was, a, he was one, of the, one of the main apostles, but I have prayed for you. That's why the Bible says pray for one another, pray for each other, pray for the ministers of the gospel. Don't criticize them. Pray for them. Pray for the young workers. Pray for the young believers in the church. Pray for them lovingly, with compassion, helping them see them grow. Anybody can change as you see them with, through the eyes of faith. Apostle Paul says, I see no man from this time henceforth. I, 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 I see no man in the flesh anymore. I don't want to see, though I have known Christ in the flesh, I don't want to know people in the flesh anymore. Anybody, everybody can be changed and become transformed and become what God desires. God desires to change your life, to equip you, to help you, to guide you, and also to use you in the purpose and in the will of God. So Jesus did not throw Peter away because he denied him. He looked at him with a gaze of compassion after the cock crew there in Jerusalem, which was like an abomination for a cock to be in that, in that temple area those days. Uh, but the cock crew to show that the people what they were doing was wrong. They were crucifying the king of kings. And, and so uh, uh, 
Peter, Apostle Peter was denied the Lord three times because he feared to die. He feared to die when the when the when the hard maid is tearing him, and the and the servant did I not see with him in the garden of, of Gethsemane, and Peter denied the Lord three times. But the Lord, when the cock crew at that time, Jesus lifted up his hand from where he was beaten so much, he looked at Peter, and one gazed upon Peter, caused such a great conviction that Peter went away. And cried bitterly, but the Lord did not uh, did not throw away Peter. He says in the Bible, he to he told him, after you have become converted. Help your brethren. Hallelujah. We are called to help each other in the body. We don't operate like Ron Rangers. We don't operate like a. Uh, uh, we don't operate uh, op operate uh, 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 alone. We work as a body, the universal body of Christ Jesus. So this means that in our effort to do God's will or to enter into our purposes. We might lose our friends and be deserted even by close friends, but we must go ahead to do God's will. If you have friends who are hindering you from doing the will of God, from going to church, especially for young people, for children, because they are fellow peers, they want you to go and do some hiking. They want you to go and do some, uh, some funny things out there to go for sports and watching of movies. Instead of going to the house of God, uh, this teaching I'm teaching here is very important for you because it's showing you for you to be able to enter the purpose of God. It may need to cost you your friends who maybe you have been drinking with alcohol or going for partying with. It may, need you, it may cost you to stop, uh, to stop walking with them. And may God help you. I pray for you that the Lord is, is going to disconnect you from wrong companies in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive that anointing to be able to disconnect with the wrong friends. So because of this determination to do God's will, in the end, uh, the Bible says Jesus was approved of God, a man approved of God. In the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 22, the Bible says Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and signs. It is good to be approved of God and not only to be approved of men or the people of the world. It is, you know, we like, we like the approval of people very much. We like people to cheer us, to clap, uh, to clap for us, you know. But uh, Jesus was approved of God himself. He was working with his father. If you want the approval of God, work with him. Work with Jesus. You must carry your cross and follow him. The, the nature, the, 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 the Adamic nature that likes to sin, to lie, to fornicate, to take drugs. The Bible says your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And I cannot take the members of my body and give them to uh, and offer them uh, like a prostitute. That's what the word of God says. Hallelujah. So the word of God says that, uh, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, you, you work with him. Work with the Father. Jesus was approved of God. The Pharisees, uh, you know, they used to pray publicly in the parking. And they lifting their hands up in the air. And then uh, they would shout there in the parking area or in the, in the marketplace for people to see how much they pray loudly. And Jesus said they have, already, they have already received their reward because I believe people would clap for them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They would clap for them. And then uh, that was the reward. In heaven, in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the kingdom of God, you have no reward because uh, Jesus was saying they have already received their reward. They have, be, they have been corrupted for, that is enough. No other reward in heaven. So we, we need to be people who are approved of God and not approved of men only. Hallelujah. So this creation shows that uh, to receive God's approval, we must be willing to do God's will, whatever it might cost us. For Jesus doing God's will had to cost him something. Being born, being born in a major, which called for humility. He was born in a very poor family with Joseph and Mary there. This was emphasized by being born uh, as a carpenter's son, which related to poverty, a lot of poverty. They were surviving by making some tables and making some beds, you know, doing some little furniture work there. And he grew up in those circumstances. And what the book of Isaiah chapter 52 says, that he was like a root. He was like a he was he was like a like a like a root coming out of a dry ground. He came from extreme poverty. Even when Jesus was born, 
uh, Joseph could not afford a towel to buy the baby. He could not, uh, they could not afford. And even it is so amazing because when the, when the Magi is and when the, when, the, when the shepherds were in the wilderness, they were told when you go to Jerusalem, one of the signs you're going to see, you'll find a baby in a Magi wrapped up in swaddling clothes. Can you imagine even when Jesus was born, they had not even a wrapper to be able to tie the little baby. He was wrapped up in swaddling clothes, you know, uh, torn clothes, old clothes. Those, that is what tied him. So Jesus was born in that kind of poverty. His ministry reflected power, authority, and service, but in it had, in it, it had testings. You know, Jesus, it did not hinder him from being born in such extreme poverty uh, because there, his ministry carried a lot of power and a lot of authority in the service. Why? Because he was in his purpose. He was doing the will of God. Jesus was the first missionary to come to the, uh, to come to the world from heaven. And that's why people like myself, I'm a missionary to the nations of the world by the grace of God, living my comfort, my comfortable life in Kenya and going to live in another country or going to live in other countries to be able to witness Jesus to the people who have not heard, to be able to become a blessing to another nation. Hallelujah. Uh, to get this money, doing God's will involved uh, abandoning his will uh, to God's will. It meant a betrayal by one of his disciples, Judas, betrayed him. That was at Gethsemane. It was so hard for him. And even to crown it all, Judas comes with a bird of men. And then he was one of the disciples, one of the apostles, people who was raising the dead, was performing miracles. Because he was among the 12, the 12 apostles. In Matthew chapter 10, the Bible says, And Jesus sent the 12. And they went and they got the same, same authority and power to cast out the demons and to heal the sick. And they came back with a good report. Judas was one of them. But Judas, because of love of money, he betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ. In the judgment hall is where he was de denied by his close disciples while he was being wrongly accused. Finally, in the desire to do God's will, Jesus had to add up on the cross, which was cruel death and an open shame. And yet he was willing to go through it that God's will may be fulfilled in his life. So in our desire to do God's will, we might be required to pass through all, uh, to pass through all or some of these steps. We therefore need to identify ourselves by faith as crucified to fresh resentment. You must be totally crucified from your anger and bitterness. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 and that 1 and that 2 says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. And let all bitterness and anger and, uh, and, uh, and you know, and malice, all of bitterness and clamor and loud protest and malice, let, let them be put of boot from you, put, put away from you with all malice. And then he says, be ye kind and tender-hearted one to another, forgiving one another as Christ also forgave you in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and chroma and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind one to another, uh, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. You are being forgiven. So you can, uh, you, you can get rid of those resentments. If you're full of bitterness in your heart, you may not be able to find your purpose in God. Actually, the bitterness is going to hinder you. The bitterness, the anger towards that person, towards the other person. And when you're bitter with somebody, you'll be, you'll be carrying a lot of accusations about them. And uh, uh, when you are accusing people, you are in the same highway with the devil. Because uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 10 says, uh, The angels were rejoicing in heaven because the accuser of the brethren was thrown down from heaven. So the accuser of the brethren is called Satan. We are not called to be accusers with the, with, with, together with him. And uh, the devil would like you to have many, many, many accusations and not accusing one person, but he wants you to accuse 1,000 people at a go. And you carry them in your heart and you have problems. But uh, the Bible is telling us in the book of Ephesians that uh, that is how you grieve the Holy Spirit 
whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. He is the one who put a mark, a seal upon your heart that you are a child of God. He is the one who put a mark. He is the one who put a seal so that when you enter the gates of heaven, you'll be asked, uh, show, me, show me the mark of salvation. Show me. Show me how, the, how, how you know, how, what sign is, he, is telling us that you belong here. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. And so, uh, uh, and so God has to lead really help us uh, to get rid of those, uh, those things in the heart. And uh, many times because you don't know your heart, how your heart is, you have to tell the Lord often to search your heart. Because the Bible says in Jeremiah 17 verse 9, the heart of a man is deceitful. And just but it the wicked who can know it. I the Lord searches the heart. I am the one who searches the heart of people. I can search your heart. I can show you. Another verse says that the word of God is like a cuddle. It is like a cuddle that can search the heart. You have to allow the, the word of God to search your heart and to show, to, to light the light and show you the traces of bitterness, the foundation of bitterness the cells and the and the and the jails of bitterness in you the regions of captivity through bitterness that are in you otherwise you are not going if if that area is not totally crucified you'll not be able to enter your destiny i want to speak about 12 reasons for putting the flesh to death these are the following are 12 reasons number one write down to do god's will the reason why we put flesh to death is that you may be able to do God's will. Once you have dealt with the flesh, you can be sure you're going to do God's will and you're going to enter into your purpose. Amen. Another thing that you normally put flesh to death is so that you can be able to build the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. You are able to build the kingdom of God. It's like marriage. The reason why God puts a man and a woman together, one of the biggest and the greatest reason is for them to be able to, uh, to build up the kingdom of God, to build up a holy nation, a pure generation. Malachi 2 verse 15, the Bible says, uh, didn't I not put you together, a man and a, and a, and a wife, that you may bring forth a holy a holy offspring, a, 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 a holy offspring for me. So you are called as a Christian, as a Christian family, to raise a holy generation for God. And uh, on the contrary, if you're not raising a holy generation for God, there are some other people who are raising a holy generation for God. And then they are, going, they are raising them, and they are raising them very fast. And then they are going to counterattack any form of righteousness in the days to come. But uh, as a believer, you may raise only one child. You may raise ten children, depending with the graces God has given you, to be able to take care of them. You only get, uh, get the number you are able to take care of by the help of God, but that particular one is able to transform the nations. You can lead them. You can help them. You can help them to enter into their purposes. You can ask God, what do you have for this little one? What do you have for this little one? And that's why the Sunday school ministry is very, very, very important in the church because it is a cradle in that cradle position uh, that uh, that the teacher, teachers are working with the help of pastors and the, and the and the and the and the leaders of the church to be able to help the children to come into their destinies to be able to receive an impartation to help them in the days to come hallelujah so we are called to build the kingdom of god one reason why you crucify the flesh is to do god's will number two to build the kingdom of god number three uh, to see Jesus glorified in your life. You cannot see Jesus glorified if you have not ha you don't have a crucified life. It's also another thing is to see so saved. In my conviction, uh, 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 in my personal conviction, because I'm a missionary to the nations of the world, I do believe that the heartbeat of the master, the heartbeat of our Lord Jesus Christ, is for souls, souls and souls and more souls to be able to come to the kingdom of light, to be able to be hit by the fire of revival and to be able to come to the kingdom. That is the heartbeat of the Lord. You are not called to do that business you are doing there. At uh, one time I was operating a business in, uh, in, uh, in Nairobi and when I was in that business, I turned that small business I was doing and earning some little money there into like an altar. People would be saved there. People would be delivered there, the same, same place. People would receive hearing. 
upon their lives, upon their souls, upon their families. I would interact with the people not only in a, in a, in a, uh, in the in the scope of abuseness, but I would end up going to their to their houses, going to their events when they are having weddings, when they are having babies. I would be involved there when they are. I would pray with them. I would create relationships, and the relationship that I made that time, some of them are still existing, like uh, almost ten years ago. And the, the relationships are still there. That means that when you are doing the will of God, when you are in your purpose, you are able to affect your community. You are able to affect your generation. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. You are able in that particular field you are in, ask God to open your eyes to tell you, why am I here? Why am I working in this hospital? Why am I working in this school? You can be a teacher, but the Lord has called you to transform an entire generation. There is no good platform you have than having a, a, a hundreds of pupils before you because you can be giving them one word, only one verse that is going to shape the destiny of that child. That even, they, even if their parents are not born again, you can plant the seed of the word of God in them. And when they grow up, the Bible says, train up a child the way he should go and even when he grows up he's not going to live those ways hallelujah to the name of the lord so god's burden the greatest god's burden is for souls to be able to come to the kingdom uh, another reason is that to, to see the body united the body of christ jesus to remain united this is one of the biggest job sites if i may call it that way that is normally a big problem in the church because we cannot stay in unity we cannot serve with love the sincere agape love of the lord you don't feel you like the other person you don't like the other person and uh, it is it is same in the bible in the book of acts of the apostles those men who are turning uh, the world upside down they were not angels they were human beings they had differences sometimes they would have sharp differences with each other but along the way as they continued they realized ah we cannot go on like this the Holy Spirit is being grieved somewhere we have to know how you have to know how to get along with your brother with your sister so the reason why you get crucified and I've, and I've learned this out of experience, that when you have a crucified nature and you, you present yourself at the cross, you bow at the cross, you're going to cause many, many, many other people, even without you telling them, also to come at the cross. And you're going to see them also kneeling behind you or kneeling where you are. And you know the working of the cross is working within them. You never told anyone, but you, you decided, I'm going to live a consecrated life. I'm going to live a life of curs uh, crucifixion. I'll be crucified in my carnal nature. And then you find there are many, many, many others. And uh, somebody said that uh, we preach loudly by the way we, uh, the, by the way we, uh, we stay more than our sermon. The, great, the, the loudest sermon is not how loud we are in our talk, in our preaching over the microphone. The loudest preaching is our lifestyle. Hallelujah. May God help us. We want to continue with other points in our next program. Kindly join us there. I want to pray for you. Father God, I pray. Let this message of truth that is coming to us, Lord Jesus, to help us. That you're going to have the, a life of uh, a, a life uh, a life of crucified uh, uh, life, O oh God Almighty, in you, in the name of Jesus, uh, being crucified in the carnal nature, that you may be able to enter another realm, the realm of doing the will of God, the purpose of God. Help us, Father. Help your children across the world. And I pray for those who are not born again. You have never met the Lord Jesus Christ. You are bowed with the chains of darkness. I want you to pray this prayer after me. And say, Lord Jesus, I admit I'm a sinner. I admit I'm under the rulership of the prince of the power of the air. And I refuse that from today. I refuse Satan. I accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in my life. From today, I ask you, I ask you to save me and deliver me from iniquity. Set my heart free from the shackles and the chains of sin. Remove these burdens. I forgive people who have carried in my heart for years and years. My parents, I forgive my friends. I forgive my grandparents. I forgive all of them, Lord. I let them go. And I ask you now, Lord Jesus, forgive me all my sins and give me a new life in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer, join a Bible-believing church. Start working with God. And along the way, you're going to discover 
that God has a big plan for your life and for your future. May God bless you. Shalom and see you in our next program. Amen. Amen.